Hi guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Harold with the Wake was born in the mid-1030s in Bourne in Lincolnshire. His father was named Leofric and his mother Egith. Harold was described as a handsome young man with long blonde hair and robust in his physique. He had a lively spirit and was certainly courageous. In fact, it might be said he was too courageous. Growing up, his headstrong nature caused him to become embroiled in numerous fights with other young men in the local area, and it wasn't long before Harrowood's reputation began to catch up with him. His parents received complaint after complaint regarding their son's behaviour, and eventually, at the age of 18, Leofric, deciding he could no longer tolerate his son's misdemeanours, exiled Harrowood. Harrowood's behaviour had also reached the ears of King Edward the Confessor, and he declared Harrowood to be an outlaw. Alienated from his family and friends, Harrowood would spend the next part of his life travelling far and wide, and some of the tales of his adventures are remarkable, with some of them being almost certainly false. One of these stories has Harrowood killing a polar bear kept at a castle by a Northumbrian nobleman. The polar bear had escaped from its cage and was now threatening the life of a young girl. Harrowood charged the bear as it neared the girl and, just in the nick of time, killed the animal with his axe, saving the young girl's life. Among some of Harrowood's other adventures include rescuing a young woman in Cornwall from an unwanted marriage, and he also suffered shipwrecks in both Flanders and Scotland. The truth of these tales are highly questionable, but it's safe to say Harrowood's time in exile was certainly not boring. In 1067, the year after the Norman Conquest, Harrowood finally returned to England after the death of the Count of Flanders, who had been employing Harrowood as a mercenary. But Harrowood returned to a sorrowful scene. His brother had been murdered by Norman soldiers, who had been attempting to steal the wealth of Harrowood's father, who had evidently recently died. Harrowood's brother had been attempting to protect his mother and killed two of the Normans in the ensuing fight. He was then killed in turn and his head was placed up high for all to see in a grisly act of oppression that would become synonymous in Norman England. Dismayed at this hideous tale, Harrowood sought revenge and he got it swiftly too, as he cut down a number of Normans as they were getting drunk at a party nearby. Harrowood was now a symbol of Anglo-Saxon defiance against their Norman occupiers. More and more displaced and disgruntled members of the English population found themselves swarming to the side of Harrowood, but with increasing prominence came danger for Harrowood. Frederick, the brother of William de Warren, who had fought at the Battle of Hastings alongside William the Conqueror, was now seeking Harrowood out in order to punish him for his act of revenge in Lincolnshire. But before Frederick could carry out his plan, he was preempted by Harrowood and cut down by the English outlaw. After this, Harrowood returned to Flanders to visit the woman he had married there. He returned to England soon after, accompanied by his wife, and two nephews. Not without good reason, Harrowood had been concerned over what would happen to his lands whilst he was abroad, but on his return he found that William the Conqueror had left them untouched. Whilst Harrowood had been away, many of his followers had been forced to go into hiding, but instantly rejoined Harrowood's ranks as soon as they heard of his coming. 
Among them included a man named Wolfric the Black, who had earned his nickname by covering his face with charcoal, helping him to go undetected as he attacked a Norman garrison, on which he had caused significant damage. Harrowwood's ranks were filled with men similar to Wolfric, brave, daring and willing to fight for their country. William the Conqueror and his Normans didn't just face resistance in the north, they found it all across England. This included the people of the Isle of Ely, who were now holding out against the king. Harrowwood's reputation had spread far and wide by this point, and it was to him the people of Ely turned. They promised Harrowwood that he would take prominence in their ranks if he joined them, and he duly agreed, making preparations for his journey south. However, it would not be a journey without some risk. After Harrowwood's murder of his brother, William de Warren was determined to gain revenge on Harrowwood and set a number of ambushes against him and his men. However, de Warren's plan didn't work, and in fact, Harrowwood came very close to killing him. Harrowwood, when he arrived at Ely, was greeted warmly. King William knew that the situation was becoming increasingly dangerous for him, and he now focused his mind on taking Ely and dispersing the rebels. However, his initial hope of taking Ely was thwarted by the difficult terrain, with his soldiers quickly getting into trouble with the marshland and drowning. The king lost a large number of men in this fashion, and realised he had to change his course of action. He left a portion of his army surrounding Ely to keep an eye on the rebels, in case they caused further trouble in the surrounding areas, while he himself retreated. Whilst the king may have thought leaving a blockade might bring the people of Ely to hill, it would prove to be not as simple as that. Ely was obviously surrounded by water, and its grain and wildlife was plentiful, so food was not in short supply. Starvation was a traditional way of bringing a successful end to a siege, but it was not as straightforward as that for King William. But William was a determined man, and he gradually increased the strength of the blockade to the point where it became impossible to enter or leave Ely. With this dramatic turn for the worse, Harrowwood took it upon himself to venture out of Ely to find out what he could about the Normans' plans. Cutting his hair and beard, changing his style of clothes, and after stealing some pots, he disguised himself as a potter and made for the king's court. However, Harrowwood became embroiled in a fight and had to make a daring escape. He was pursued through a forest until he chanced upon a member of the king's retinue. He told the man who he was before he returned to Ely. The man must have been amazed at this encounter. He returned to King William's court and told the king of the incredible meeting. William declared Harrowwood to be a most remarkable man. The Normans were becoming a little more desperate. They knew they faced a formidable and stubborn enemy. One of their more bizarre tactics was to use a witch who would cast spells and incantations at the people of Ely, and when she had finished, she promptly decided to expose her backside to them on not one but three occasions. Surprisingly, that didn't work. A fire was then started to try and flush the rebels out, but only led to chaos in the Normans' ranks, with the witch breaking her neck during the carnage. However, Herowood's forces would then find themselves seriously depleted when an earl tricked a large number of the most important people in Ely into thinking he was going to make a bid for the crown and overthrow William the Conqueror. As a result, they left Herowood to stand alone against a king. Herowood now took his fight to the Normans elsewhere, and he would reside deep in the forests of Northamptonshire, emerging not only to attack Northampton, but Cambridge, Lincoln, Leicester, Peterborough, Warwick and other places. Herowood and his men captured the abbot of Peterborough, who was ransomed for a huge sum of money, but try as he might, Herowood's rebellion against the Normans that had started with the murder of his brother, could not go on forever. 
William's eventual subjugation of the English nation was growing increasingly inevitable, and many English people recognised this, with some fleeing abroad and some even going as far as joining the Varangian Guard in the Byzantine Empire. Despite proving time and again how formidable a warrior he was, Hereward was, after all, only one man. Eventually he would make peace with William. The king was undoubtedly impressed by this remarkable warrior. The rest of Hereward's life would be spent in relative peace, living on his father's land in Lincolnshire and serving the king when called upon. He would die in around 1072. This leaves us with one final question. Why was he called the Wake? The best guess is that the term meant the Watchful and was coined centuries later. Whether Watchful is quite the right term for this astonishing man of action is another matter. Hereward the Wake was the last great Anglo-Saxon hero.